I am happy to report we did finally get some rain yesterday, although I'm not sure if it was enough, <laughs> but I am thankful that today I can probably skip watering, which is fantastic. Um, but one of the things I thought I would show is that I'm switching out my tomato cages. So I had, you know, regular style tomato cages. I couldn't find enough of what I needed, so I found these. They're called tomato twists, and I found them at Home Depot. I ended up going to several stores to find enough of what I needed because I kind of like the look of them. So today I am going to switch out the remaining tomatoes. You've probably noticed, they, they I get a few more every time I film. You probably have seen these things sticking up and wondered what the heck they are. Oh, that's, that's what they are. Um, they're whimsical. I think they're fun. I think they look a little cleaner in the garden and they're only like four dollars each or something you know they're they're about the same price as like a tomato cage but so let me flip this around so now you can get a little bit of a better look i really like them i didn't think i was going to i was a little nervous and uh i actually really do you kind of just carefully you know twist them around as they grow and they seem to stay pretty good. Now, ugh, I'm a dork and just knocked off some of those flowers, but anyway, <laughs> you get the drift. Um, also, keeps everything pretty clean. I have found that it's been very easy to find the suckers, so I could pull those off, and as you can see, the tomatoes are right out here where you can see them. I've got this one over here that I just did yesterday. He's a little close to the edge here. I don't know if I should move him. Uh, I don't know. I think he's probably okay. Um, anyway, so, yeah. Oh, see? There's a sucker. For whatever reason, on these twists, I can really see these and pull them off very, very easily. So, I like that. And I like that this is giving my garden some uh, much-needed space and... It just, it, it looks less cluttered to me. It, it really does. So every time you see that it can twist, you just kind of do it. Twist it on there. I don't know, some of these, maybe they're not supposed to twist together like this. Because sometimes when your tomato splits, you end up with two areas like here. This is actually two areas that split and see look at even here that is a sucker that outgrew itself <sighs> that you know, see they can grow pretty fast that's a sucker I may have to go get my shears and uh, pull that off this one is big enough you could honestly root that um, I don't know I'm a little nervous about cutting it because it is so big sometimes I have to play that game um, there's another one over here. I mean, they're very easy to miss and, and take hold. Um, but I found that using these, look at, see, doesn't take much. Doesn't take much at all. But, um, yeah, so anyway, that's what I'm, I'm playing with. And I really like them. I don't know if anybody else has had experience with them. I did have one other type that I'm using over here. These are, <laughs> these actually are what caused the whole problem. So I have been growing tomatoes in these large pots. These are from Lowe's. I don't know. They're probably 10 or 15 bucks each, but they're big enough for tomatoes. Well, I found square cages at Tractor Supply a few years ago. Well, every time I add another bucket or two, I don't have another square cage and I didn't get out early enough this year to buy new ones. So as you'll notice, I've got some that are different um <laughs> so i went out looking for these and couldn't find them and that's how i found the spirals now i did try the spiral in these and it didn't quite work as well if i can find that video i will post it because i've already uh done a video on this and just haven't shared it yet so here's what this kind of looks like and here's what i'm afraid of this because it's in this pot is not really it's not that sturdy 
I think as the plant gets taller, it will lean on this and this will start to go like this or whatever way. Um, and I'm a little worried that if a good storm comes and for some reason this gets enough wind, I wonder if it would pull that right out. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I am considering changing out some of the cages over in the garden. Let's go check that out. Because I think these will do better if they can go further into the ground. And maybe I'll take some of these larger cages in the back and replace them. Um, I do know that these are the Cherry Sweet 100s, and last year my Cherry Sweet 100s went absolutely crazy. And these are taller, so I don't know. I don't know how that'll work, but I guess we can try it. Anyway, though, I did want to show you these today and uh, see what you think. See if you think they're as cool as I do. All I'm doing for each one of these is slowly pulling up cage, being very, very careful not to tear my plant. It's probably a little big for switching out cages, but very slowly okay, and it might flop over, so I kind of try to lean the plant if I can. Oh, that one did pretty good. So that's that. You take one of these twists and I get it close to the base down here at the bottom. Let's see if you can see that. And just push it down in. Push it down far so it's nice and sturdy. Grab any suckers while you're down here. <laughs> okay. So that's what that looks like. Then you just kind of go with the circular pattern on the, on the twist. Now I have broken some branches doing this, so it is a very delicate process. This is probably much easier to do when your plants are smaller. Just take it slow. Actually, you know what? I might, uh, there we go. You can kind of twist it if the um, if it seems like it's too tight. Twist it so that you can get a better angle. Ah, there we go. Come on. And if you have to reposition it, it's really easy to do too. Oh, see, I did. I broke one of the stems off of it. It's a good thing tomatoes are resilient. I feel like every one of my tomatoes ends up with, like, two stalks, and they're, <laughs> they're really not supposed to. I mean, if you're clipping them. Some people don't clip them. There we go. Okay, that's all it is. You know, I get some shears, I clip off the tags. I also thought I would show you what the tag on these looks like. Just so you're clear on how they are packaged if you go looking for them. It says raise more plants in less space. Flip it over. It also says grow bigger tomatoes faster, raise more plants in less space. Spiral design supports the plant as it grows. Powder coated finish for long life. While I'm out here, I just found that we have a special surprise guest. This, my friends, is a hornworm. 
I thought it was a little early for these. I guess not. And I wasn't expecting to see that. Now, usually a telltale sign is some of the shearing off of your leaves, though I still believe those were probably from the deer. Um, but they have a very recognizable poop. Now, I looked at this just a minute ago and thought, I don't know, that doesn't like, that doesn't really look like it. Um, their poops are kind of cylindrical. They, um, they've got a very odd configuration. It's got a bunch of little bumps on the outside. Um, I wish I could find one to show you, but I don't see any, and that could be because it just rained. If you see that, that is a telltale sign, and, uh, that happens, this is the guy that you are looking for. So, today is, today is turning into quite the tomato day and I no longer have chickens. I'll be honest, I, last year I don't think I even had one that big. I did pretty good at finding all the, the hornworms, but I wasn't really looking. So, this one got by me. I found another foe. This one is very much like the tomato hornworm. I don't know what these ones are called. I don't know if these are the army worms. I think the army worms, they look just like the hornworms, but they're more brown. These ones, I don't know. I was battling these all last year. Um, I might have called them army worms. I'm not sure that they really are, but they are just as damaging. So. Now that I see that these are in the tomatoes, I get to be vigilant about looking for these suckers because uh, they can wipe out your plants pretty easily. So here's the finished look. I really like it. I was able to find some pests doing this and uh, was able to get a lot of suckers that were not visible before. I really like the fun look. I did these three over here too. And I was able to repurpose my cages over here with the asparagus. Um, that one there did not come up. I could use a couple more cages. These big ones I think are a little too big for over here. So for now I've laid them down as a deer deterrent. Um, I'm also hoping maybe the cage will deter them. Maybe they won't want to poke their head in there. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know what a deer's eating habits will look like. I've heard that certain things will deter them if it means they have to work harder for it. Um, but now I kind of want a couple more cages. Um, that's okay though. Now I did stick a couple of the large suckers that I pulled off in random places if these take, which you know sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I'll, uh, I'll share that with you guys so you can see what that looks like. And um, we can do another, we can do a little quick walkthrough over here. So, let's see. The beans definitely look terrible because they got nibbled on. I don't know what the status of those is going to be. But what I did yesterday is I planted two more window boxes of fresh beans. Um, it's always a good idea to stagger beans anyway so that you get different crops during different times. So in case these don't make it, I went ahead and started two more. And I kind of like doing them in these little planter buckets. Um, this is the original squash. I haven't looked these over for pests today. Everything looks pretty good. I mean, I'm, I'm really happy that these are uh, getting bigger. You know, we've got what looks like the beginnings of some fruit possibly. I'm not sure if those are just female flowers. This is a little big to be just a female flower, I think. So these are looking fantastic. I don't see any squash bugs over here yet. Remember we put the, the dill here. I'm hoping that uh, keeps the critters away. I do have some little gnats of some sort under here. I don't know if that's just because the soil is wet. They like wet soil to lay their eggs in. And it's probably nice and cool underneath the leaves. But these look okay. 
You, the okra, some of the okra has like doubled in size. Look at these. That one was looking great until it got nibbled. So, I don't know. You don't need a lot of okra to produce, so I'm not too worried about it. I just, it's annoying that my, the ones in the back are missing now and I've got ones crowded up here, but part of that was due to how I put them in the garden. I wasn't sure if these were gonna make it. <laughs> so normally where I like some uh, logic to my gardens, this year there is some missing. <laughs> Here, I finally have some peppers that are turning red. So they said when these turn red, they're ready to eat. I have not picked them yet, but I've got two. So that's exciting. And my peppers, after fertilizing, they are getting some of their leaves back and they look so much better. So yeah, I'm thrilled about that. They were struggling for a hot little minute. We went from aphids to what I think was a nitrogen issue. Yeah, look at look at the damage on these leaves. That's a clear indication there's a, a little bug in here somewhere. Yeah, we still got. Oh, maybe that wasn't. I don't see any aphids, but I'm looking for a caterpillar, but I'm not seeing any. I'll be honest, in years past, I feel like my eggplant have all sort of looked like this, so I don't know. We actually might get a little more rain. Oh, I'm sorry, I have to look at that sky. You might hear thunder, um, which is my favorite. Um, anyway, before it does, and uh, I want to finish up one or two more projects if I can. Um, this is blood meal. I have never worked with this. And um, this is supposed to give a nice little boost of nitrogen. The numbers are right there, 12, zero, zero. Remember to 12, that first number is our nitrogen. So before this rain hits, since I don't know what I'm gonna water, I don't wanna overwater. So we're gonna put this on and hopefully the water will, you know, bring this down into the soil. It might take it a minute to soak it up, but I thought at the very least, I am going to get some of this on the uh, at least these squash that look so yellow. Oh, here comes the rain. All right, we had just enough time to get that on and it's starting to rain. Or is it stopping? It's thinking about raining. It's trickling. I'm not personally afraid of the rain. It doesn't bother me in the least. I'm just not sure what it wants to do. All right, I'm gonna carry on my merry little way then. And uh, one last thing I want to do today is I bought some cow manure composted cow manure and I'm going to try to get that on my asparagus real quick so this weekend they really all need to get a little bit of extra soil compost manure whatever <laughs> whatever will feed them so that's the other thing that I'm doing okay I had just enough time <laughs> to get that manure on the asparagus I did not show it and I'm covered in dirt, that's why I can't even fix my face here right now. <laughs> um, anyway, I just did one bag, sprinkled some on all these areas. And looks like that's all I'm getting to today, unless this rain stops. I hope it doesn't. I hope it keeps coming all day. <laughs> uh, signing off. Hope you guys are happy gardening, and I'll talk to you soon.